So this video is an update on some documentation on the basement program uh, found in our sort of basement workflow found in the Jerboa plugin. Um, so what this does, and for maybe a little bit of context, is the when we run the basement program, which I went over um, in another video, uh, which I'll link in the description, this basically runs uh, runs a an IDF that we sort of compose out of some building information and some material information along with um, some weather data and outputs um, a series of ground temperatures as they relate to uh, the building surfaces, mostly the slab and the walls. And it gets a little more nuanced than that, but we are, this is sort of a more simplified approach. Um, Additionally, what comes out of this basement program is an IDF that contains a series of objects and schedules that include some um, information about other side coefficients and um, ground temperature schedules. And the nice thing about this, these two is, um, we can be more specific about the ground temperatures that are associated with which surface. So in a very more simplified model, um, I would usually have um, basically, you know, it, well, for a small house, I would have uh, a slab. And if we're talking about a basement, I, I would have a slab and maybe four walls um, that are basement walls, right? Um, now, the one way to do this is to feed this site ground temperature building surface into the um, HB um, model to OSM component, which I covered a little bit in the, another video, and feed this into the add string, where this then sets those ground temperatures. Um, every surface with a with a with a um, outside um, boundary, well, whatever outside surface condition or outside boundary condition, I forget what the name is, um, uses these temperatures as that outside surface condition, as that outside surface temperature for every surface. Now, what this does is it provides a little more nuance and it'll give you um, a, 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 an upper wall surface temperature, a lower wall surface temperature. It'll give you a slab um, average temperature. It'll also give you a slab perimeter and a slab core temperature. So it gets pretty detailed. Um, what this component is doing, which is the um, Jerboa basement IDF component, is it's assigning the walls. So it's assigning the, the, the wall average temperature to the, to the um, wall surfaces, and it's assigning the um, average floor temperature to the, to the floors. Um, so we're getting a little bit better. We're getting, you know, a, a, a wall temperature um, and uh, and a slab temperature, which are slightly different. Although I do note um, in the basement program um, before just using uh, the, the the wall surface is that really the difference between these two between the wall surface and the um, floor surface is less than 1% difference. It's, it's really, really small. Um, nonetheless, this does provide a little bit more um, selectivity and gives you a little more um, little more nuance in just deciding what's what's what. So from this, we're basically just taking this these basement objects that come from the basement program, plugging them into the basement objects, feeding um, the, the already uh, created IDF probably from the Honeybee to OSM component, uh, which I just deleted. Um, feeding that into the IDF input, I'm running the write, I'm running the run, the run creates the IDF, um, which gives a path. Then the path can be fed into the Honeybee IDF run component. Um, and from there, you can run that again. So just to jump over to the Honeybee example, which is actually included in the um, in the examples folder, um, I'm just showing you exactly that. So in this case, 
I've run my basement program, I'm taking my basement objects and feeding that into the basement objects of the input component. I'm taking the IDF from the um, HB model to OSM component, feeding that into the IDF input. I'm writing, running. That's giving me an IDF uh, path that then I'm feeding into. So this is just a filtering for comparing to the FC factor method. Um, but I will change this to zero because we want to look at the first one um, and I'll run that. So now this is looking at the uh, basement method, um, the basement ground temperature method um, with those modified uh, honeybee objects uh, included. So um, that is just a brief overview of the uh, sort of basement program 2.0, which has a little more nuance. Um, I'll leave it up to you to compare uh, to compare what's better. Um, actually, we can do that pretty easily where we just look at um, shifting between the modification or not. So, okay, I don't know, let's see, let me put this over here. So in this case, if the modification is true, we're looking at the modified basement method. Um, if uh, the modification is false, we're just looking at the, the ground temperature strings, which I believe are plugged into the, should be plugged into, yes, plugged into the basement. So it's the same, same temperatures coming from the basement, in which case we're basically seeing a 0.3, um, I guess this is kilowatt hours per meter squared uh, difference in UI. So not a huge difference. Um, we're, you know, the main differences we're seeing are in the heating and cooling, which is, you know, what we would expect. Um, I guess some in the, the fans and whatnot as well, which are associated with heating and cooling. Um, but those are just two ways to go about this. I think um, this sort of helps helps validate that this more like simplified method of just running the ground temperature string and inputting the ground temperature string um, is, uh, you know, gives pretty decent um, and well, uh, you know, well adjusted results. So um, we can also compare this against the uh, uh, FC factor method, which um, is going to be slightly different. And it's not set up to do that uh, right at this moment, but um, that is it. Uh, Thanks for watching. Look out for some more tutorial videos coming from me on um, some upcoming Gerboa updates.